socks work pretty good, actually. <laughs> So it's been a while since we talked about the high school Jeep and everything going on with it, mostly because the high school Jeep, compared to the other Jeeps, is in the best shape. It has Tom Woods drive shafts, Raceline wheels, Optima battery, um, you know, the list goes on and on, and it's just so much more ready than these other vehicles. So I've been giving it a lot less attention. Not to mention the fact that Steph has a Bronco that's in 5 million pieces out here on the ranch, and we've been focusing a lot on that, trying to get that project rolling and then you know the hardest part is staying consistent keeping that project going so this has been on the back burner and i haven't really discussed it a lot with you guys on youtube recently but i wanted to talk about how i ended up with these bilstein 5100 shocks and kind of the progression that led me to get there so we'll start at the very beginning when luke and i drove up to st george utah to go get the split decision cj5 which we were planning on picking up as a parts jeep we stopped at our friends Holly and Walter's house. Now Holly has a YouTube channel called Mischief Maker TV and she is currently building a 2024 Jeep JLU Rubicon for a Tread Lightly giveaway. If you want more information about that, I'll just leave a link to it in the description of this video. It's a great opportunity to win a fully built Jeep that Holly is chipping away at day by day. But that Jeep came into her Jeep shop completely stock. And in the process of putting, you know, RPM steering control arms and all this one ton axle stuff on it, all the stock stuff on that Jeep had to come off. And I was up in her shop, we were just kind of shooting the breeze, talking about things. And she said, hey, by the way, if you need any stock parts for your CJ, like stock JL parts that could possibly work on your CJ, you know, by all means, you can take what, what you think will work. And I was looking at this pile of stock Jeep parts and I was like, man, I bet I could make those shocks fit on my Jeep. They look like they're the right length. Visually, they look, you know, they look brand new, but they look like they could work on this Jeep. So I went ahead and grabbed those shocks and brought them back here to the ranch. And I started to take the stock shocks off of this Jeep, or not stock, but whatever shocks were on this thing, because they were really beat up. And I knew that the shocks were bad on this, so... I took the first shock off and I compared the shock to the JLU Rubicon shock that Holly gave me. And right away I was like, oh no, this isn't gonna work because even though they were like the same length, um, the inside diameter of that sleeve that goes onto the shouldered stud coming out of this Jeep was a half inch. And on this Jeep it's five eighths. And I know that there's no way I can drill out that sleeve carefully enough to not overheat that rubber and just melt the whole shock out and so i was like okay i'm gonna go online i'm gonna do some research and i'm gonna see if i can get different bushings for this shock but i was not about to put the old shocks back on this thing because i knew they were blown and so it's like i've already uninstalled this i'm not going to reinstall a bad shock so then i was like okay f it this this set of shocks from this jail is not going to work i'm just going to buy shocks on amazon so I went on Amazon and I looked up the lift kit for this Jeep and it's like a Skyjacker two and a half inch soft ride or something. I'm guessing there's no labels on any of this stuff. It's very old. So I found shocks that fit that lift kit setup, And so I bought Skyjacker shocks and they showed up in the mail like two weeks later. They had super long lead times on them, but that's fine. I'm never in a hurry to do any of this stuff. And those shocks showed up and right out of the box, I was like, oh, these look small. Sure enough, they were like stock ride height, like little tiny baby shocks. So I contacted that seller on Amazon and I said, hey, I'm returning this, but just so you know, you advertise this for a three inch lift and these are stock shocks. So then I was at an impasse and I was like, okay, I've, I've taken all of the bad shocks off of this Jeep now. The JL shocks didn't fit. The Skyjacker shocks were stock size. They were way too small. All right, so I just measured the Jeep and filed for a return on those shocks that I bought. I ordered a set of Bilsteins that are the correct length, both extended and collapsed. The difference between the shocks that I ordered the first time and the Bilsteins is like $100, so um, it's a little more expensive. But at this point, this will when the Bilsteins show up, it'll be my third attempt at trying to replace the shocks on this Jeep. So if it costs an extra hundred bucks to do it, I'll just do it. So anyways, I'll catch up with you guys uh, in just a few moments when those shocks arrive, we will get this job finished up. I got this set of Bilsteins 
and got them installed and now the shock saga is over. So three sets of shocks just to get new shocks on the high school Jeep. I don't know what kind of lift kits on it and that kind of created more complication than necessary. Also trying to fit 2024 shocks on a 1979 Jeep uh, made things a little complicated. But anyways, now we have these 5100s. So uh, what I wanna do is drive this thing around a little bit and see how these 5100s feel. I really haven't driven this thing at all because I parked it here and then I was weed whacking around it because stuff grows like crazy out here. And I accidentally weed whacked my gas line. So Steph and I ran to Napa Auto Parts yesterday and picked up some new 3.8 fuel line. So I got fuel line in this thing. It runs and drives again. And now I can actually test out those shocks. So um, let's drive it around the ranch and just see how those feel. Because the last time we drove this thing around, it had four fully blown, just white monotube shocks. I have no idea what kind of shocks they were. Okay, so I love these PRP seats. And in fact, I love them so much that I've been working with PRP to get seats for the other Jeeps. So the Split Decision CJ5, White Lightning YJ, and Cream Puff CJ5, and um, the M83. So we have four other Jeeps that I'm trying to put PRP seats into. We'll talk more about that on another video, but God, these things are so nice. Okay, anyways. So when we did the mud bog video where we put this Jeep on super swampers and drove it through the pond, uh, by the way, terrible idea. Would not recommend doing that with your vehicle. It really did a lot of damage to this thing. But when we made that video, this Jeep had no shocks on it at all because I was in that transition period between taking off shocks and figuring out what shocks fit it. So I had no shocks at all. Um, it just doesn't want to run today. Come on! Come on! So before I put these new shocks on it, I would describe the ride as very bouncy, very soft. It's definitely a lot stiffer now. I, I feel like I feel the bumps more somehow. So I don't know if that's just because I was just straight up riding on four blown shocks and it was just very leaf springy. But um, I also feel like it, it has a lot less body roll into the corners. So that is really nice because I feel like when you're articulating into something a little bit harder than you expect to, you want the suspension to drop, but you don't want the body to follow. So it's less reactive on the top end, if that makes sense. So I feel like this will be a lot better for us when we hit the Rubicon Trail. are good jeep's still not a trophy truck <laughs> that was violent your front tires came off the ground did they really yeah. oh i want to hit it harder now <laughs> okay. shocks were pretty good actually <laughs> All right, guys, so that is the story of how I put Bilstein 5100 shocks on the high school Jeep. I got shocks for free, 
took my old shocks off. The new shocks didn't work. So I bought shocks, those didn't work. And then I bought these uh, based purely off of the specs, not for vehicle fitment. But if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe to Crawl TV. I have new content coming out every week and I would love to share it with you. So stick around and see what happens next. There's a lot of exciting things in the works right now. We have the Rubicon Trail coming up in two short months and we have some really, really fun content planned for building these Jeeps up before we get there and also once we're there. So I will see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Crawl TV.